In this video, we want to do a couple of extra examples with implicit differentiation. So remember with implicit differentiation that y is a function of x. So y is still going to be our dependent variable. And so when we take the derivative, when we take the derivative, of a term with y, we will likely need to use the chain rule. So when we've got our example here, x plus y is equal to sine of y, and we want to differentiate this. Remember, we're di differentiating both sides. So we're going to say that we're going to do d dx of x plus y, and then that's going to be equal to d dx of sine of y. And I'm also being really precise about this and you know, making sure that we're using all of our derivative rules properly. So we'll split up the left-hand side there uh, because we have the sum of two terms. And now we'll take the derivative of each of our individual three terms. So our first term here, we've got d dx of x. So that's the derivative of x, which we've done that a lot of times. That's 1. And then our next term, we've got d dx of y. So that's asking us, what is the derivative of y? The derivative of just a plain old y is dy dx, or y prime. And then this is equal to d dx. Again, that's telling us to take the derivative of what's inside of our brackets here. And so we want the derivative of sine of y. So now, because that y is stuck inside of another function, we need to take the derivative of that sine function, which is cosine, leaving what's inside alone. So that's that first half of the chain rule. And then times the derivative of our function that's inside. So Remembering with this that that sine function is like the outside function, the y is our inside function, and what we're doing is that chain rule where you've got f of g of x, you've got one function plugged into another, so we're taking the derivative of that outside function with our inside function still plugged in, and then times the derivative of our inside function. So Right here, our cosine of y, that's the derivative of that sine function with y still plugged in, and then times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. Now, we really have done the process here. We have differentiated, but we like for our answer to be, you know, dy dx equals a bunch of stuff. So we want to solve for dy dx. We want to get dy dx all by itself on one side. And it really doesn't matter how you do this. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this again, just so you can see all of my process here, is that I'm going to subtract, and let me grab a different color, I'm going to subtract that dy dx from both sides. And what I'm doing here is I'm getting all of my terms that have a dy dx all on one side together. And any terms that don't have a dy dx, they're going to stay on the other side. So the way I set it up this time is that I made my left-hand side of my equation is any term that does not have a dy dx. And my right-hand side is any term that does have a dy dx. Now, on this side, where we've got our both of our terms with a dy dx, we can factor out that dy dx. So when we factor that out, here on our first term, we're left with that cosine of y. And then here with our second term, we're going to factor everything out. And remember, when you do that, you have to leave a placeholder 1. So we need to be able to go and do the distributive property, multiply this back through, and get right back up here where we started. But we're almost there. Now to get dy 
dx all by itself on one side, we just need to divide both sides by this cosine of y minus 1. Cosine of y minus 1, oops, my parentheses got a little lazy there. There we go. And why we do that is because over here on our left-hand side, those are going to cancel out. And on our right-hand side, we're going to get 1 over cosine of 1, or cosine of y minus 1 is equal to dy dx. Now, you, depending on how you choose to solve this, you can get slightly different looking answers. So if you had chosen up here at this step to subtract 1 from both sides and subtract cosine of y from both sides instead, you could have gotten an answer that looked like this, negative 1, 1 minus cosine of y, and this is exactly the same. So these two answers, even though they look a little different, they are actually exactly the same. So sometimes if you're working on this, you know, with, um, you know, a study group or you're kind of working a little bit ahead of the teacher, your answer might look slightly different, but they likely are actually the same. And a quick way to check that would be to plug both of those graphs into Desmos and they should be the same graph. So let's do one more of these. I'm going to scroll a little bit. So we're going to again determine dy dx given that we've got e to the y squared is equal to x cubed plus y cubed. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So we're going to do d dx of e to the y squared. That already looks like that's going to be fun. And then we're going to have d dx of x cubed and then d dx of y cubed. So again, it's the derivative of each piece of this. And our first term right here, we're going to need the chain rule because we've got e to a power other than just x. So we need the derivative of the e part of it. And it, e is its own derivative. So we leave that exponent alone. Now we need the derivative of our exponent. Well, our exponent's y squared. So the derivative of y squared, we need to use the power rule on that. Get 2y. But then y is a function of x, so any time you're taking the derivative and one of your terms has a y in it, it's going to get that dy dx when you take the derivative of the part that has the y because you are using that chain rule. So that's going to show up every single time. And this is going to be equal to, so again, this middle term here, that's one that we're used to. We've done that over and over again. We're going to get 3x squared. And then our last term here, our y cubed, again, that's a chain rule problem. We're going to take the derivative of our to the third power, just like we did when we had x to the third power, and we're going to get 3y squared, but then we need times that dy dx. And again, this is always because y is a function of x. So you have to kind of imagine that y is some sort of equation that's sitting there. We just don't know exactly what it is. And so we always have to put that it, we want to take the derivative of that. We just don't know what it is. So we're going to write dy dx. So now what we need to do is similar to the last problem. We need to collect any terms that we have that have that dy dx. We need to collect all of those on one side. And any term that doesn't have a dy dx that's going to stay on the other side. So our two terms that we need to get together on the same side are this, our e term and then our 3y squared term. We need to get those two together on one side and then we're going to leave that 3x squared alone on one side. So it doesn't matter which way you move things, but I think it's going to be easiest for us to move, subtract that 3y squared dy dx from both sides. So we're going to get e to the, let me see, I think I want to write this as 2y e to the y squared. Just rearrange that multiplication a little bit. That's the mathematician in me. I have to make it look pretty. And we get 3y squared. Now, just like the last problem, even though we're dealing with different kinds of equations, we're going to factor that dy dx out of that left-hand side. That's why we collected all of those terms together on that one side. So now we can factor that out, and in our first term, 
our first term here, we're left with, once we factor out dy dx, 2y e to the y squared. And our second term here, when we factor out dy dx, we're left with minus 3y squared. And now all we need to do is divide both sides by this, I meant to change my pin color, 2y e to the y squared minus 3y squared. If we divide both sides by that, it's 2y, not 3y y squared minus 3y squared. There we go. Once we do that step, then on our left-hand side, we're just left with dy dx, and that's equal to 3y squared over 2y e to the y squared minus 3y squared.